Hi everyone, tech giants like Microsoft and Google are locked in a public race to develop most advanced large language model. However, even their immense resources don't guarantee a first place position. A recently leaked Google memo highlights the amazing breakthroughs being made by the open source community. Independent researchers from all over the planet are quietly breaking down walls and propelling the future of artificial intelligence. Curious what it's like to be part of this renaissance? Keep watching to find out. I'll talk in three sections. More details about this memo, open source model development, and some open source success stories. So in terms of this memo, of course, OpenAI and Google are locked in an arms race. This memo was purportedly leaked from inside Google, and the title is, We Have No Moat, and Neither Does OpenAI. It appeared online just a few days ago on May the 4th. The memo describes the Llama model, which was developed by Meta, formerly Facebook, and then somewhat accidentally released open source. Meta intentionally released the source code for the Llama model, but they had intended to keep the model weight private. The model weights are the result of hundreds or thousands of hours of training. They're what you actually use when evaluating the model on inputs. But they did release the model weights to some academic and government partners. And within a week, one of them had leaked the model weights to the internet. By opening a merge request onto the Llama GitHub repository, containing the torrent link to download the weights. This Llama model that was released was very bare bones at first. It didn't have any reinforcement learning with human feedback embedded in it, for example. It's kind of like the GPT-3 or GPT-4 models before they had had additional training from human feedback and safety integrated into them. At the same time, there's a new technique called LoRa or low rank adaptation, which was allowing very rapid iteration on model development. The way it works is it basically uses some linear algebra to factorize some matrices down to smaller matrices, which can then be computed much more readily to adapt a language model in the desired direction. Even though the Llama model has relatively few parameters, 13 billion on the larger version, by utilizing LoRa, developers were able to make very rapid advancements to the technology. The memo talks about how Google and OpenAI are myopically focused on trying to build very large language models. And in many ways, those very large language models are likely to be more capable. However, they're also very unwieldy to work with. So these companies are experiencing really slow iteration processes and, and they're having trouble implementing other technological improvements such as reducing the resources needed at inference time. The memo concludes by saying that Google should try to own the ecosystem. In other words, open source their own stuff and then get people developing on that platform the same way that Google successfully did with Android. Ironically, Meta is actually closest to this goal of owning the platform though, because all the open source changes have been made on the Llama platform, which is compatible with what Meta uses internally. The memo provides a timeline of important events from February 23rd of this year through April 15th, which is not very long. And there are many rapid improvements during that time, sometimes only a matter of days between each one. And thanks to Laura, most of those advancements were made at the cost of only a few hundred dollars each in terms of model training time if you were to do all the training in the cloud. As a result, open source development has taken this Llama model to GPT-3 levels. So in this section, let's talk about open source model development. I'll start by saying that I personally am not involved in contributing to the open source community around large language models, but I do have past experience working with open source speech recognition models. So I will use that experience to talk about model development in general. It's definitely difficult to do on your own. Open source AI development needs data training resources, and inference optimization. So for data, in my case, I use some existing open source speech repositories. These days, there are high quality data sets like the Mozilla Common Voice project, but it's very hard to get that raw data that's useful for training your model. I actually collected hundreds of hours of my own speech from when I was using previous versions of my models to try to bootstrap into later versions. And this is the big advantage that those big companies have initially, is they have the capital to spend to just hire lots of people to speak a lot, for example, hire lots of people to speak in a certain dialect or in a certain language, or hire some mechanical Turkers to solve problems or rate things. For example, I've heard that in the past when Google wanted to introduce their speech recognition, the Android speech recognition to a new market, they would simply burn their way in. They would just pay for a moderate amount of voice recordings from native speakers and then release a product and then continue bootstrapping from there with all the new data samples they were getting, with all the new data samples from voice search that they were receiving. Rather than trying to gather all the appropriate data, it can be much easier to just use a pre-trained model instead, which may have taken thousands of hours to train, but can be fine-tuned to your own purposes. That's what I did with Caldi voice recognition models, and that is exactly what Llama is as well, is it's a pre-trained large language model that people can experiment with. 
In terms of training resources, if you don't have a pre-trained model, you're going to need to have a lot of compute power to be able to process all that raw data and actually adjust the weights and train a model. That computation power is mostly in the form of GPUs for most models, and you need a lot of GPU hours. GPUs in the cloud are very expensive, extremely expensive. It's much better to purchase your own. It'll pay for itself after a few months usually, as long as you have the computers to run them and the electricity to power them. I actually personally bought three high-end GPUs and lots of hard drives and SSDs, set them up in some servers, and donated the training time to open source projects. I used them a little bit myself as well, but like I said, I was mostly adapting some pre-trained models in my case. For Llama, because they're able to use this LoRa low-rank adaptation optimization for training and adjusting the weights, they're able to start with this pre-trained Llama model, use only a small amount of compute resources to make a significant change to the model, and then publish that. As an added benefit, anyone's LoRa changes will actually stack on top of each other. So if I make an improvement to the model and publish it, the next person can use it and combine it with their own improvements. Importantly, this LoRa training is cheap enough that you can use local resources. You can use a single GPU inside a normal computer, which really democratizes development. Let's talk about inference resources. So model training is when you're taking the data and trying to make the model in the first place. And then model inference is when you have the model and you are giving it a sample that you care about and trying to see what the model says about it. So in speech recognition, inference is usually you're talking at a microphone and trying to see what it says. Ideally, you really want a low powered device to be able to run the inference. You want to optimize on the computation time needed and especially the amount of memory needed to store the model. Speech recognition models, for example, often need like two gigabytes or more just to store them in memory. And GPT-4 is reportedly using a 640 gigabyte array of GPU memory to store all the model weights. But my goal when I was doing voice recognition was to have the inference happening locally on a phone. I originally built voice accessibility on a phone so that you could perform operations like touches and selecting apps by just using your voice. That was actually not completely local to the phone though. It was using a cloud-based recognition engine, which I was running on my server primarily because I needed server CPUs and a lot of memory to actually run that model. These days, that capability is actually integrated into the mainstream on standard Android devices, which is really cool to see. Again, by using an internet connection, I was able to also do speech recognition on a Raspberry Pi with a little display attached that was displaying the words as you were speaking them. It was really fun too. But in general, the inference and the graphical interfaces or the user interfaces that exist around that, integrations and so on, are essential to making models actually useful. But this is often 75% of the work. Once you have a base model, you're only part of the way there. You have to think about how the model is going to be run, what resources are required, and especially can it be entirely local to a user's device because that will be fastest and best performing. Llama, again, with these open source modifications, runs very quickly, especially with Llama CPP, which is a C++ re-implementation of the inference engine. That version is actually able to run on a Pixel 6 phone very slowly, but it still works. In the third section, I want to talk about some success stories when it comes to open source AI models. I'll start by talking about image generation, text to image. There was a lot of research behind this and a number of different models, including Stable Diffusion and DALI from OpenAI. At one point, Stable Diffusion became open sourced and then a lot of development from users all around the world started happening on it. And it has a lot of amazing features, for example, in painting and out painting, where you can basically start with an image and have it generate beyond the boundaries of the image, for example. And this was actually called out by that Google memo saying that there was a real renaissance in AI image generation as a result of stable diffusion. Actually, I'll note that I'm currently using Midjourney to generate all the images in my YouTube thumbnails, but that's not to say I have anything against stable diffusion. In terms of voice recognition, which I know well, the first really successful speech recognition engine was called Dragon Naturally Speaking, which is a commercial product. But some hackers, in the good sense of the word, took some help from an employee inside the company and started adding the ability to extend the voice grammars with custom definitions. And that started a long process of open source innovation around this Dragon speech engine. Eventually, academic and open source models got better and better until there were seemingly dozens of them. And then the open source community actually took all these Dragon grammars and ported them so that they could run on many different speech engines. Just to name a few of the open source models and frameworks, there was Pocket Sphinx, Caldi, Deep Speech, and Wave 2 Letter, which came from Meta as well and was later renamed to that Flashlight. And now, although there are still commercial models, they're either very cheap or free. So Google has a cloud speech API, for example, 
which has one of the highest accuracy rates in the industry. And you can use it for free in a lot of Chrome web browsers, or you can pay small amounts to be able to access it through an API whenever you choose. OpenAI actually has a model called Whisper, which can do speech recognition in tons of different languages. And just like for Llama, there's also a Whisper CPP, whisper.cpp, which was implemented by the same person, Georgi Gerganov. And this system allows very fast evaluation of Whisper and the Whisper weights can actually be downloaded so that you can run that model and play with it yourself. Unfortunately though, it has very high latency of about 30 seconds, so I never use it in my projects. But I do use an open source speech model based on Caldi, which is customized for development on Linux every single day. It's extremely customizable and it's very, very fast as well. Now, in terms of large language models, of course, we've been talking about how Llama was released to the public somewhat accidentally and how there were just days between significant improvements by the open source community, including instruction tuning and quantization, quality improvements, human evaluations, multimodality, and reinforcement learning with human feedback, which is what turned GPT-3 into ChatGPT. It's very important. And it's now possible to run GPT-3 locally on a laptop where it's very speedy, similar to ChatGPT in terms of performance, or even on a Pixel 6 phone where it's very slow, unfortunately. But just to put into perspective how amazing that is, how in two months we went from just a base Llama model to something that can run on a laptop and a phone, to put that in context, GPT-4 was trained on A100 GPUs, which are $10,000 to $15,000 each, and inference is done on nodes that are running eight of those GPUs at once, for a total of probably 640 gigabytes of GPU memory. Every time you send a message to GPT-4, eight GPUs are working really hard to give you an answer. So given these three examples of image generation, voice recognition, and large language models, what can we deduce about how open source wins? Well, whenever there are enough people interested in a project and whenever it's mainstream, whenever there's a reasonable basis to work from, such as an academic base or Llama, of course, the underlying technology also has to be free from patents, then there's a really good chance that open source is gonna do well. The Google memo specifically calls out the difficulty of prosecuting individuals. The fact that the individuals are spread out all over the world means that it's very hard to track, let alone try to block all of those changes that they're all making. It may even fall under fair use depending on the jurisdiction. If this whole idea of open source development really interests you, I highly suggest checking out the book Hackers and Painters by Paul Graham. It's an old book, but it was one that really inspired me back in the day and really shaped my thinking about open source communities. In conclusion, this leaked memo, which was supposedly from Google, is very prescient. Whether it's real or not, it's pointing out a lot of very key elements. Open source large language models are going to leapfrog ahead because there is so much interest in them, the barrier to entry is relatively low, and there is an excellent basis to tinker with. I highly suggest that, by the way. Tinkering is a lot of fun. I should acknowledge as well that it is dangerous to have these models completely in the open because anyone can take them and use them for any purpose. In theory, with companies like OpenAI and Google gatekeeping the models, they at least had some amount of control over how the systems were used, and now we have no control. On the other hand, we're avoiding another whole host of issues that would have come about if these technologies were under the control of a very small set of companies. If you want to know more, I highly suggest reading this memo yourself. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. And if you found this video interesting, then check out this other video I made about why ChatGPT caught everyone by surprise. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That's all I have for today. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.